My name is Frank Jukator. I'm a reader for environmental humanities at the University of Birmingham. And when I say that, usually people are asking, well, environmental humanities, well, first, what is that? And second, what is it good for? Uh, well, I'm a historian and I deal with the interaction of uh, man and the natural environment in its full diversity. So we look into a, a lot of non-human actors that do not get so much attention in normal uh, history. So we deal with pollutants, we deal with resources, we deal with pathogens, we deal with animals. Uh, so it's about bringing these non-human actors into our history and it's about uh, respecting their distinct rationales. Animals, pathogens, they operate uh, according to their own logic and to their own rationale. Um, humans have tried to control them over time. In fact, modern history, in a way, is a big project of control over the natural world, and yet this is very much an incomplete project and will likely remain an incomplete project. I'm looking at all these issues in a global context, and I think environmental issues are perhaps better positioned than other issues to uh, globalize and look in a global context because they have a baseline of similarities. It's not like problems are all the same all over the world, but if you talk about pollutants, uh, they have very similar effects no matter uh, where they're emitted. When you talk about resources, they have a way to, well, make the world flat in a way. Uh, pathogens kill uh, rather independent of, of race and gender and other normal parameters. So there is a certain baseline of similarities that you can trace all over the world. And in a way, what I'm doing is teasing this uh, out and exploring to what extent we can write a global history of the environment. So that's what I'm engaged in, making, uh, writing a richer, more diverse history, which in some respects is also more surprising history. This is a history where a, a very tiny insect can kill a multi-billion dollar industry, as it has happened with cotton in the United States. Um, so it's about writing a richer, more surprising history, and it is about bringing all this to bear on our ongoing conversation about environmental issues, uh, because this is uh, a dimension of problems that we don't look at that often. We often think, well, it's about science, it's about technology, it's about these kind of technological solutions that we get out of the environmental crisis. And I think we're starting to realize there is something else. There are tropes, there are metaphors, there are people who have shaped our understanding of problems. There are views of environmental problems. The entire understanding what is an environmental problem has grown over time. There are institutions with their own legacies. So there is a lot of history in our conversation about environmental problems that is often not spelled out. And bringing this to bear on our quest for solutions, that's what the humanities, the environmental humanities are all about.